Freedom by Design, One Community Weekly Progress Update, number 308. One Community is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are creating open source and free shared blueprints and resources, tools and tutorials, and do-it-yourself instructions for highest good living. Creating solution models that create additional solution-creating models in the service of all life on this planet. My name is Jay Sable, and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. This is a weekly progress update number 308, February 17th, 2019 edition. One Community's mission is to bring together people with the consciousness for the highest good of all life on our planet and to build sustainable and self-replicating teacher demonstration hubs as a pathway to global sustainability. And today what I'd like to talk about is freedom by design. Because a big part of what our project is creating is freedom for people. And not just the traditional freedom of like financial freedom or time freedom. Those are big foundations. But also the freedom to eat the high quality food that you want to eat. To breathe clean air. To drink clean water. To have the freedom to be who you are in an environment that accepts you. To embrace diversity. And if you're somebody that is an ex exemplifies diversity, to be in a place where you can share that diversity and have it celebrated. And that could be ethnic diversity, that could be racial diversity, that could be sexual orientation diversity, it could be a lot of different things. And so the model that we're creating, a lot of times we talk about how it's an evolution of sustainability, which is taking the physical foundations of sustainability, which are food, energy, and housing, and combining those with the emotional foundations of sustainability, of sustainability which are fulfilled living practices, highest good economic models, highest good education models, and true earth stewardship. But also as part of those emotional foundations is this freedom. It's this freedom by design is a big part of that evolution of sustainability. It's designing environments that are specifically purposed to increase the freedom in people's lives. And freedom is one of our highest values. Freedom for people to believe what they want to believe, to love they want the way they want to love, to worship the way that they want to worship, to be able to eat high quality food, drink clean water, breathe clean air, to educate their kids the way that they want to, to have control over the aspects of their environment, whatever those aspects are that they want. And so the one community model as an initial model is design, designed around the seven different sustainable village models that you see happening in the background here, as well as the duplicable city center, to create an environment, to build an environment where people have the freedom by design to control all aspects of their lives that they want to, to put people in control of their environment and to give them all the tools that they need to not only maintain that environment, but to expand and evolve and grow that environment so that freedom by design encompasses all aspects of their life that they're most interested in. And so the housing aspect, the food aspect, and the energy aspect is des are designed to reduce overhead living expenses and to create economic freedom. The emotional foundations, the fulfilled living aspect, the contribution, the collaboration, the cooperation, the educational part, which also reduces overhead and expenses and helps create financial freedom. But really it's about putting control of those things into the hands of the people that are living in these environments so that people can create the environments that they want. Bringing people together with shared values and shared goals so that they can work together towards those goals to create a way of living that most people will consider to be better than the way they're living right now. And so... Freedom by design for us is about that. It's about giving people control over their environments and giving them all the do-it-yourself tools, tutorials, resources, and instructions for replicating everything that we're creating as either individual components or as the complete teacher demonstration hub designed specifically to teach others how to create teacher demonstration hubs as well. This is what one community is doing. And so we're an all-volunteer organization. We've had over 300 volunteers work together to create what we've created to this point. And we will build one community as a place that people will be able to come and visit, experience what freedom by design looks like, what freedom by, and the social architecture aspects of that, and the fulfilled living aspects of that, and the educational aspects of that, and the open source economic models that are aspects of that as well. Putting it all together and making it easy enough, affordable enough, and demonstrates attractive enough so that the idea can spread on its own. So this idea of freedom by design can be accessible to everybody. And then letting human creativity, human ingenuity do the rest. 
building the blueprints, building the designs, building the website infrastructure and creating the videos and the PDFs and everything that people need so that they have those instructions in the way that works best for them and making it all open source and free shared so that people can then take what it is that we're doing and then human ingenuity and human creativity can do the rest, evolving it and creating many different iterations of what freedom by design looks like for different people. And open sourcing and free sharing all that as a contribution back to the collaborative, back to the open source and free shared cooperative, so that there's more and more options, more diversity of freedom models that people can apply and creating that so they can grow indefinitely. This is how we create a sustainable world. And in, do so, in so doing, we can simultaneously and collaboratively and cooperatively address the greatest challenges of this generation and generations to come and invite everybody who wants to to participate and be a part of it too. So with that said, here is one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working toward this goal of freedom by design uh, by addressing all aspects of the human experience in ways that are sustainable and replicable and open source. Check it out. The one community approach to highest good housing is eco-artistic home building that is affordable, sustainable, do-it-yourself duplicable, resource and space efficient, and consists of seven different sustainably constructed village models. This week, the core team continued design updates to the open source Murphy Bed Furniture Assembly details. This week, we confirmed bed swing clearance, checked dimensions of parts O, WT28, and WT17, and added a headboard option. You can see some of this work here. Heymanth Kotaru, structural engineer, completed his 29th week helping with the structural engineering research and calculations for the Earth Bank Village. This week, he finished the initial cost analysis and summary for why we chose 12D nails. You can see some of this work in progress here. And Vidu Kumari Pandey, civil engineer, also completed her 32nd week volunteering and helping with the Earth Bank Village materials and costs. This week, she worked on the six-dome cluster patio and tropical atrium cost analysis details by calculating volumes and quantities of materials and researching their costs. You can see some of this work here. Shadi Kennedy, artist and graphic designer, also completed his 40th week leading the development of the Murphy Bed Instructions. This week's focus was making diagrams illustrating the installation of the frame in upright post sections, updating the details and parts for assembly of the base for the bed frame, the bed frame itself, and the feet from the bed frame assembly section. You can see some of this work in progress here. Dan Alec, designer and illustrator, completed his 37th week helping with Earthbag Village render additions. This week he finalized improving the colors and perimeter plants in this view of the complete village looking north and added it to the 3D perspectives image and adjusted all that image's colors so they are better matched. Dean Schulz, architectural designer, continued working on the Earthbag Village. Here's weekly update 149 from Dean. This week's focus, as shown in these images, was finishing details for most of the internal furniture and starting to test textures. And Elizabeth Kahn, environmental consultant, completed her eighth week as a researcher with our team. This week, she began researching sustainable spigot options for the most sustainable spigot options page we're developing. You can see some of this work in progress here. One community is also creating an open source duplicable city center. It is designed to be LEED Platinum certified, provide 12 guest rooms, dining for over 150 people, and laundry and recreation space for over 300 people, all while saving money, time, space, and resources. This week, the core team continued with week six of our research into lake and water retention landscape creation as an alternative source of water for the duplicable city center sprinkler and emergency systems designs, agriculture, gray water processing, and more. This week, we focused on describing the design specifics and different applications of the various kinds of dams. You can see some of this work here. The core team also continued building the new page, sharing the best, safest, and most sustainable paints, stains, varnishes, and sealants. We finished the lead tutorial section and added the best sources for sustainable stains. You can see some of this work here. Tanya Griffin, Aubrey Ann Boyle, and Ali Marsh, interior designers from Lotus Designs, also completed their eighth week helping with the duplicable city center interior design details. This week's focus was finishing the concept boards shown here that outline, highlight, and summarize the total space. You can see some of this work here. And James Harrigal, student researcher, also completed his 11th week researching the best, safest, and most sustainable paints, primers, stains, and sealers. 
This week's focus was another round of research and writing up the details for the most sustainable stain options. You can see some of this behind the scenes work here. Sneha Dongre, structural engineer, also joined the team and completed her first week helping with the Duplical City Center structural details. This week, she learned how to export the updated designs from the SketchUp 3D file and began the process of removing all the non-structural lines and components. One community's approach to highest good food is duplicable almost anywhere, scalable for different needs, more biodiverse and nutritious, part of forwarding a global open source botanical garden collaborative, and includes nine different free shared and duplicable growing environments. This week, the core team continued adding all the highest good food rollout plan details to our staging page. This week, we wrote most of the details for the 10 to 20 person rollout section. You can see some of this behind the scenes work here. The core team also continued writing the behind the scenes narrative in the detailed food rollout plan for the various stages of development. This week, we continued research into what kind of fence is best for goats. We found a detailed video, corner post installation and bracing, that clearly demonstrates corner fencing and bracing the corners for added strength. Because of the quality and informative nature of this video, we'll be researching further videos by the same author relating to gate installation and fencing stretching. Because of the quality and informative nature of this video, we'll be researching further videos by the same author relating to gate installation and fence stretching. And the core team continued research and 3D design of the chicken coops needed for 100 chicks. This week, we researched ventilation and redesigned the windows for even better light and ventilation by installing two upper vents, adding adjustable sliding ventilation hatches, a pop hole, night resting racks, and landing rods in front of the nesting boxes. Additionally, the core team added several new sections and added details and resources to the swales, culture and soil preparation and amendment sections of the Soil Amendment Open Source Hub. And last but not least, Guy Grossfeld, graphic designer, completed his seventh week working on creating an open source icon in symbol set for our permaculture design. What you see here are the icons created so far. One community's approach to highest good education is designed for all age groups, adaptable to any schooling environment, inspiring and fun for all participants, includes national standards, all subjects, lesson plans, teaching strategies, learning strategies and tools, classroom design, and more. With eight years invested in designing it, this component of one community is pretty much complete until we move on to the property and continue to develop it with teachers and students. Completed sections include comprehensive subject outlines covering arts and trades, English, health, math, science, social sciences, technology and innovation, and values. Also, 52 weekly themed lesson plans covering all the subjects we just mentioned, all learning levels and ages, and usable in any learning environment. 12 detailed and progressive curriculum outlines are also complete, summaries and integration of all the best-known alternative education programs including Montessori, Waldorf, ORF, Regio, and more, and leadership skills, collaborative assessment formats and forums, a global online free education resource hub, classroom design, and more. This week, the core team continued working on the structural redesign of the Ultimate Classroom. We evolved last week's design to add more space, bathrooms, cubby storage, sinks, and other details shown here. The one community approach to highest good society is globally focused, individually enriching, cooperative and collaborative, includes a highest good network and application, four different economic models, and combines fulfilled living and true earth stewardship for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. This week, the core team finished the rest of the broken and incorrect links throughout our entire 1200 plus page website, and then ran multiple new reports to confirm the site is cleared of broken links. You can see some of this work in progress here. Jin Hua, web and graphic designer, created another two new video tutorials about keyword refactoring and improving our keyword research and campaign design process. Refactoring is removing broader useless keywords. You can see some screenshots from these videos here. Emilio Nahara, digital marketer, also continued with his 19th week as part of the marketing team. This week's focus was using Jin's videos in refactoring the sustainable village, temporary kitchen, large-scale gardening, food forest, and hoop house keyword strategies. You can see some of this work here. In addition to this, the Highest Good Network software team consisting of Jordan Miller, web developer, Tyler Calvert, full-stack software engineer, and Justin Coons, software engineer, continued developing the software. 
This week, the team started building new Redux routes for projects and team pages, created the front end design template for the reports page, added the ability to run reports on multiple teams, projects, and people, continued developing the user interface for user management, and replaced Bootstrap with React Strap. You can see some of this work here. There you have it. There's one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards this goal of freedom by design. If you'd like more details, more specifics, links to all the open source content, you can visit a written blog. If you'd like to see an email every time one of these updates comes out, you can send an email to onecommunityupdates at gmail.com and we will add you to our newsletter list. And of course, if you'd like to help out, uh, you can visit our helping page. Easiest way to help out, of course, is sharing our information on social media or just liking this video, subscribing to our YouTube channel, uh, and helping us get the information out. We're on all the different social media networks to make it as easy as possible. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Reddit, Pinterest, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and about 15 other social media networks to make it as easy as possible. So wherever you are in the social media world, we are probably there as well. And if you want to help us out, share information. Take any page of our website, share it on social media, help us get the word out, tell people what it is that we're doing. It's a big help. And uh, of course, if, you've, uh, if you're just helping by watching to the end, if you've helped by donating to us, we're 100% unpaid team. We're all volunteers, including myself. So every little bit helps there. We do appreciate it. We appreciate you watching to the end. We appreciate it if you're just supporting us energetically by saying, yay, go on community. All those things make a difference. And we are grateful for you helping in whatever way works best for you, even if it's just watching to the end. So with that said, until next week, we will, of course, Keep on keeping on. Thanks.